Good morning, Mets fans, and welcome to a Tuesday edition of Driving with Mr. Met. I am Mr. Met, and no game last night to talk about, but I do want to talk about a few things uh, that are on my mind. Um, one of them is something I missed yesterday's show, or at least that I didn't pay enough attention to. Uh, another is a preview of the upcoming couple of games and couple of series which are going to be make or break for the team. And finally, I want to go over what I think the Mets ought to do with the lineup in the next coming days with a few key pieces coming off the injured list to rejoin the team. I'm going to do that and more on today's show. So before I do anything, I have to first say I'm wearing my Conforto shirt today. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, this is not intentional. I don't cherry pick shirts, but this shirt is dedicated to my good buddy, Joel. This is a very clutch shirt, by the way. Um, <laughs> he'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, so I want to get into, uh, I want to get into something I missed over the weekend. I, yesterday I, I had a lot of stuff to catch up on. I was out sick on Friday and, um, didn't get to talk about the Indian series, and then of course we had to deal with the, the Braves sweep and whatever. So um, I, I really shit the bet on the fact that on Saturday, Pete Alonso tied the Mets franchise record with 41 home runs in the season. And it's, it's a matter of time before he breaks that record and becomes the sole owner of the single season home run record for the Mets. Um, there are moments in in a, a player's career um, that are, you know, pedestal moments. And this season's been full of those for Pete Alonso, who um, at, at a very young age, as a rookie, has clearly become a very vocal leader on this team. And I, I love the fact that Alonso is so out in front of everything and is standing in front of and standing up for his teammates. Uh, as a rookie, it's he's got a poise that uh, is incredible, and it's 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 something that other players should strive to be. I mean, he just has a very loud, bubbly personality. That I mean, look, you can't teach that to somebody. You either do or do not have that kind of personality. But to go along with that, there's a genuine joy that he brings to the table uh, in succeeding, and he seems to just relish that chance to succeed as a Met. And it's, it's so cool. And it, it's something we haven't seen since David Wright. And it's something that doesn't come along very often. So uh, I just wanted to make sure that I spent enough time emphasizing just how huge that home run was. The spot that he hit it in um, with a better pitcher on the mound and perhaps a better play at third base. It's a different story that we're able to tell surrounding that home run. As opposed to it just being the home run that put the Mets in the lead for a half an inning before Wheeler coughed up that that one one run lead, um, but I mentioned a third baseman because I'm going to segue to this in a little bit. Uh, Todd Frazier's error um, or non-error didn't help, but um, that's neither here nor there. So kudos to Pete. Can't wait till he breaks the record and he becomes the sole possessor of uh, the single season home run mark for the Mets. Now the Mets tonight are about to embark on. Uh, a three-game series at home with the Chicago Cubs before they head out on the road. Now, as we know, the Mets are chasing the Cubs for the second wildcard spot. Right now, they're two games behind them, and this, as luck would have it, is a three-game series. So, uh, if you do the math, if the Mets sweep and take all three games from the Cubs, they put themselves a game ahead of the Cubs. However, it's not that simple. There's two other teams in the mix as well. One of them is the Phillies. So the Phillies are right now a game ahead of the Mets. Uh, the Phillies won an extra innings last night. They they did their very best to hand the Pirates a win. Um, and the Pirates said, no, nah, we're good. <laughs> uh, the Pirates played Mets last night. And so did the Phillies, too. I mean, the Phillies had the bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth and failed to score. Um, but regardless, um, the Phillies are playing a bad team. And someone joked on Twitter last night that I thought was funny. Why is it that all of the teams that the Mets are chasing seem to always be playing the Pirates? And it seems to be true. Like, it was the Nats and the Pirates, and then it was the uh, the Cubs and the Pirates, and now it's the Phillies and the Pirates. It's like everybody's playing the Pirates, <laughs> except the Mets. <laughs> um, but the Mets did play the Pirates already, so we got their, our six games with Pittsburgh out of the way. Um, but again, regardless, uh, th this series tonight kicks off a 
probably the most pivotal stretch of the season at this point in time. So the Mets, as I said, they have three at home with the Cubs starting tonight. Uh, They travel to Philadelphia for the weekend, um, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then they go to D.C. for the Labor Day, the the annual Labor Day trip to uh, face the Nationals uh, on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, After that, they return home for the Phillies again. So it's it's a huge stretch. And it's 12 games, uh, all of all of which are against teams the Mets are chasing in the wild card hunt. Now the Nationals are far enough ahead right now that the Mets cannot look at the Nationals as someone, uh, a team they can legitimately catch. Is it possible? Absolutely. I mean, it's only six games, and there's 30 some games to play, so 32 I think to play. Um, but regardless, th- th- it's in reach. But they can't focus on that. They have to focus on catching the Cubs, surpassing the Cubs and not letting the Phillies surpass them. That's the key over these next 12 games. It can be done, it is doable. The Mets have the pitching to do it, and winning streaks are only are, are only as good as the next day's pitcher. And the Mets have starting pitching right now that they can boast about. Um, the weak link is, is Zach Wheeler at this point, but he's one start away from a switch flipping and him being good again. So it, it's it's, it, the Mets are in position to take control of their destiny over the next 12 days. And if you read an article on SNY yesterday, and it's not really an article in that it's a, a news story, it's an, a, basically an opinion piece supporting uh, or supported by some quotes from an anonymous National League talent execu- uh, talent um, evaluator. And it talks about how the Mets got swept by the Braves, but that that should not knock them down. It, it should wake them up, and he thinks it will. Um, we'll see what happens, but it's a good piece. It's a good, like, morale-boosting piece. So if you're down about what happened this weekend, and it, it makes sense that you could be because, look, they just got swept at home. Um, they got swept by the second-best team in the National League, a team that, by the way, took two of three from the from the Dodgers, who have the best record in the NL. And right now, I, I think the Braves are the only team in the National League that are poised to be better than the Dodgers. Um, now, short series, another story, but doesn't matter. Um, the Mets lost to a really good team this weekend. And as I said yesterday, they lost two games they absolutely could have won. So they were in position to win all of these games. Again, that doesn't matter. Wins and losses are the only things that matter. And the Mets lost all three. But the talent scout agrees with me. They're going to bounce back from this. They have the talent to bounce back from it. Um, it's just a matter of doing it. So... Uh, p- part of part of bouncing back and part of doing what the Mets need to do going forward is constructing a lineup that will support um, support scoring some runs, and that is one thing that didn't happen enough in the National Series. I mean, you take Alonzo's home run out of the equation, and the Mets were only able to scratch across four runs in the three games. So that's um, that's a recipe for failure with without question. Um, so. How do the Mets address this? You know, right now there's there's one glaring weak link in the starting lineup, and it's at third base, and it's Todd Frazier, and I mentioned it before. Um, at, at this point going forward, Todd Frazier has to be moved to the bench, and I'm sorry, but he has to stay there until Juan Lagares stops hitting. Because Juan Lagares is hitting the cover off the ball right now. Even his outs are hard outs, and he's getting hot at the absolute right time. So, uh, you know, Lagares has to stay in center field. J.D. Davis, although he's cooled off a little bit, still putting together significantly better at-bats and plate appearances than Todd Frazier has been. Um, Frazier's highlight is that he loses the bat once every four swings, it seems. Uh, so uh, Frazier's got to, again, I'm, I'm kind of going through the options here. Um, J.D. Davis, better than Frazier. Lagares right now, better than Frazier. Um, Jeff McNeil, clearly better than Frazier, his base running blunder aside from Saturday night. Um, it doesn't matter. All of these guys are better options in the lineup than Todd Frazier. And his saving grace has always been his defense, but his defense has been suspect of late. So whether the Mets decide to put Jeff McNeil at third base or J.D. Davis at third base, it doesn't really matter. Both of them are going to present better options for the total well-being of the team in the lineup than Todd Frazier will. So Todd Frazier has to be on the bench, period. And it has to start tonight, and I'm hoping that's where he is tonight. Um, The other piece is that um, Brandon Nimmo is a couple of days away from making a return to the big league roster, and that's going to make things a little bit more sticky. 
And um, here's why. So if the Mets go ahead and pull the trigger on putting Frazier on the bench and and, and uh, keeping Lagaris in center field because Lagaris is still hitting, um, what happens when Brandon Nimmo comes back? Because we're not talking about an infield piece here. We're talking about an, an outfielder who is a good defensive outfielder, um, a, a decent center fielder, but a pretty good corner outfielder, either in left or right field. Um, what I would foresee happening here is that Joe Panic becomes the odd man out, that Jeff McNeil plays second base, J.D. Davis plays third, Nimmo plays left, Ligaris, again, assuming he continues to hit, plays center, and then Conforto stays in right. Um, the nice thing about that is it improves the defense up the middle pretty significantly, too, because McNeil's been a very good defender at second base. Ligaris, as of late, has been his former gold glove self, and Rosario's come into his own pretty nicely as a shortstop. It also shores up the corner outfield positions. So the, the, the weakest link in that whole scenario is J.D. Davis at third. But again, uh, Frazier hasn't been um, Brooks Robinson over there of late either. So it, it's, it's sort of like a lesser of two evils almost. And yes, Davis is going to struggle defensively, but you have to hope that his bat's going to make up for it. And that's what I'd like to see the Mets do going forward. So for the Cubs series, Todd Frazier needs to be on the bench. He needs to be a late-inning pinch hitter. He can still provide pop. We've seen that. He does have a flair for the dramatic. We've seen that too. So having Frazier available off the bench is a plus. And eventually, once uh, Nimmo comes back and had Joe Panic coming off the bench, we've seen that Panic can handle bunting. We, he's hit the ball well situationally. He's another bench piece slash pinch hit option that's a significant improvement over any of the guys that the Mets have on the uh, on the bench right now. So that's my thought going forward for the lineup. I, I think that's the best approach. We'll see if Mickey agrees, and we'll find out tonight when the Mets take on the Cubs. 7-10 start. On the mound for New York is Marcus Stroman looking to make his first big impression as a Met, uh, having a great stellar start. He'll face off with Hugh Darvish from the Cubs, who has been good of late, but is certainly hittable, and hopefully the Mets can do it. They need to get off to a good start in this series. They need to take the opening game. We'll see what happens tonight. I'll be back tomorrow to talk about it. Until then, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Met. And as always, let's go Mets.